Welcome everybody. This is part 12 of step by step vitrectomy to continue different techniques of macular hole surgeries. Inverted flap technique, temporal flap technique, retracting ILM door, autologous retinal transplant, and the amniotic membrane graft. Inverted ILM flap technique. It involves placing small remnants of peeled ILM that are left attached to the hole margins on the macular hole upside down. This can be done with the help of perforocarbon liquid to prevent the displacement of the flap and for its repositioning if required, as known BFCL has hydrophobic forces which helps to keep two surfaces attached to each other. This video illustrates the inverted ILM flap technique, starting to be the ILM at a point about two disc diameters from the center of the macula, peeling all around and keeping the ILM attached at the margin. Keeping this attachment helps to prevent ILM flap loss. As mentioned, this was helped with the aid of perfluorocarbon liquid. Perfluorocarbon liquid push this flap against the macular hole. It is worth to stress that there is no push to insert the ILM flap inside the bottom of the macular hole, not to damage the retinal pigment epithelium, just leaving the flap on the surface only. So, what are the problems which may be encountered during inverted flap technique? The main problem is flap displacement during fluid air exchange. To avoid this problem, BFCL assisted technique, as mentioned in the previous video, aspirate fluid meniscus before aspiration of BFCL, as will be mentioned and described in the next video. Also, multilayer flap may add a benefit, decreasing the risk of losing all the flaps. To solve this problem, simply reposition of the flap which may be helped with viscoelastic injection over the flap, keeping the flap in place. After doing inverted flap technique and then going for fluid ear exchange and aspirating the fluid in the interface between the ear and the perfluorocarbon liquid, then keeping the fluid needle at the edge of this bubble and aspirating the fluid at the side of this BFCL carbon liquid bubble. Waiting until the perfluorocarbon liquid bubble got merged with this fluid. Aspirating the perfluorocarbon liquid prematurely makes this fluid to get on the surface of the macular hole ILM flap and may displace the ILM flap at the surface. The second technique is the temporal flap ILM peeling. In this technique, a small temporal pedunculated flap is left attached to the margin of the hole and then flapped back towards the base of the hole. So in this technique, we just repeat the ILM at the temporal site and not beating the ILM all around. As we see in this video, this patient has a traumatic macular hole with cradle rupture at the edge of the optic disc, starting to make a slice at the temporal part of the macula. This slice will be the base for temporal flap. And then getting the temporal flap, peeling the ILM at the temporal site, and the inversion of this temporal flap on the surface of the macular hole. The idea of all techniques is to make a scaffold. So what are the problems of temporal ILM technique? The main problem is flap reversion to its original site, leaving the hole bared. To avoid this problem, during fluid air exchange, aspirate the last fluid meniscus over the optic disc nasal to the flap. This helps to make traction forces on the flap and decapses the flap inverted over the surface of the macular hole. Also BFCL can it help. So if this happened, how to solve this problem? So simply do reposition of the flap. The third technique is retracting ILM door. The ILM retracting door technique uses a temporally hinged ILM flap which contracts to the temporal site to cover the macular hole, even when the macular hole hasn't been shifted to the nasal site. This photo describes the retracting ILM door technique. The ILM is built from the nasal to the temporal site, and then the ILM is left to come back to its site to cover the macular hole. The ILM is retracted to somewhat and cover the macular hole. This is mostly relevant to the biopic macular holes. The fourth technique, which added so much help in primary and refractory macular holes, is autologous retinal transplant. This technique involves harvesting a free flap of autologous neurosensory retina 
and the positioning gate over the macular hole. As we see in this video, with macular hole with retinal detachment, starting to make a fashioning of the retinal grafts, making a light dysermy, maybe adjust points, and then using both hands to fashion the retinal graft. Then before cutting the retinal graft, increasing the peripherocarpal liquid to the side of the retinal graft. And after this, then sliding the retina graft on the surface of the retina until we get this graft on the surface of the macular hole. And covering the macular hole with this autologous retinal transplant. So what are the problems of this technique? The main problem is post-operative graft dislocation. How to avoid this problem? We can decrease the incidence of this problem with making a well-sized graft of about two disc diameters in size. Also, peripheral carbon liquid can be left inside the eye for just one to two weeks. This helps to stabilize the graft. But what to do if this problem already happened? To solve this problem, we have to fashion a new graft, which at this time, we can put this graft in the subretinal space. This decreases the incidence of flap dislocation and loss. The fifth technique is amniotic membrane graft. This technique involves the use of human amniotic membrane patch to close the macular hole. As we see in the video, the amniotic membrane is prepared outside the eye. Then the amniotic membrane is put on the surface of the macular hole and then with the other hand, injection of peripheral carbon liquids. After this, then unfolding this amniotic membrane with both hands with two forceps, waiting for some time until the amniotic membrane is completely unfolded on the surface of the macula. Finally, this is a recent algorithm which was described by Dr. Tamir and Dr. Omar. This describes different techniques for management of primary macular hole. So, in this algorithm, if this macular hole is less than 300 micron, then doing just partial plane vitrectomy is enough. If the size of the macular hole is between 300 micron and 400 micron, then doing total eye limb peeling is enough as described in the part before. Then if the macular hole is between 400 micron and 750 micron, then we will lock to the patient. If the patient is non-myopic, then inverted eye limb flap technique is relevant. If the patient is myopic, then doing either eye limb retracting door or flower petal, inverted eye limb technique is relevant according to the degree of myopia. If we have a very large macular hole with a size more than 750, then doing one of four techniques, autologous retinal transplant, human amniotic membrane transplant, or both, or doing macular hole hydrodissection. For refractory macular holes, there is another algorithm which was described also by Dr. Tamer and Dr. Omar. We will look at the size of the macular hole. If the size of the macular hole is less than 750, then we will see if there is insufficient ILM or there is a sufficient ILM. If there is insufficient ILM, then going to ILM free flap, getting an ILM from a far part and then putting this free flap on the surface of the macular hole, or going for free autologous retinal transplant or human amniotic membrane grafts, or doing a macular hydrodissection. Then if there was remaining ILM, we will look if in the previous operation there was previous ILM flap, so we will go to make a reposition of this flap. But if there was previous ILM bill, then we will go for superior white basal ILM flap transposition. If the macular hole is more than 750, then we will go as mentioned before in primary macular holes, either for autologous retinal transplant or human amniotic membrane or both or going to macular hydrodissection. And thank you.